everyone, I'm Hugo. And I'm Jake. And this is The Bible Reloaded. Today we're looking at yet another Christian children's show, but this one's a little different. It's not creepy like salty, at least not in the same way. This one's cringy. This one, I'm sure you've all heard of it, is Bible Man starring Willie Ames. Bible Man! That's the theme song. Yeah. Willie Ames uh, was in Eight is Enough and Charles in Charge and some other stuff. Mostly Bible Man, though, let's Pretty say. Pretty sure he's also in Celebrity Rehab, if I remember correctly. He was in Celebrity Fit Club. Was that it? I think he was in Real Life Rehab. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I see the confusion. Yeah. So today we're going to go ahead and look at The Incredible Force of Joy. It's pretty bad. So here we go. Yeah. All right, so the episode opens in an abandoned warehouse, and I don't know where it's supposed to be located, but whatever. We get uh, Bible Man's token sidekick. He's a sneaky black friend, and he does acrobatics, and he rolls around, and he has laser wrists. Look how crouchy he is, though. He's so crouchy. He's really good at squatting. Good for Coates. His name is Coates, is by the Coates? way. Who names a person Coates? <laughs> Uh, there's a Joker ripoff there that he's fighting, and we say it's a Joker ripoff because his face is painted, and he's like, I'm gonna make a joke out of you, yeah, Bible he's, Man sidekick! He's wearing a burlap KKK outfit, though. I think that was that was mostly budgetary. <laughs> anyway, uh, Coates calls into Bible Man, and he says, one of the cringiest <laughs> lines I've ever heard anyone say, Bible Man, I'm still waiting on you, bro. Bro, what if Robin called Batman bro? The Joker guy says, come and get me, caped Christian! Which is the second most cringy line <sighs> I've ever heard. And then Bible Man, because apparently this has just got to get worse immediately, starts doing somersaults and backflips, and then he glides down on his cape like in Batman Forever. Yeah. But it's so bad. This is where all the budget of the episode went to make it look like Bible Man is good at anything other than talking to children in a purple costume. Bible Man says, mind if I drop in? That's not even a zinger. And then Coates is like, hey, where were you, Bible Man? Bible Man makes a poop joke. He says, I was in the little superhero's room. There was a poop joke in Bible Man, and that is a fact. A best case scenario, that's a pee joke. It's okay, though, because they immediately follow that up with Coates murdering the Joker guy with laser wrists. Yeah, they completely killed the bad guy. Batman, who lives in the DC universe, doesn't kill people. Bible Man... Being based on the Bible, though, of course he murders people. Right. That's kind of the point of the entire Old Testament. And then we get into the hideout of the main villain, who is just a guy, Mr. Misery. He's got a gargoyle TV that he watches Bible Man on. Which I feel bad for him, because he also has to watch Bible Man, so really I understand his motivations. Like, oh shit, I'd want to kill Bible Man too if I had to watch it all the time. And then we get into both the worst and best intro of any superhero show I've ever seen. Uh, the entire backstory of Bible Man, his parents weren't killed, he didn't get a magic ring, he wasn't from another planet, he, his car broke down once and he found a Bible in the mud and that's why he decided to dress up like a superhero. But he was a man of status, look at his car keys and his, <laughs> and his 1988 laptop. They make, because they say, he was obsessed with wealth, status, success, well he's still rich, he's still clearly, he has a mansion and a cave under the mansion <laughs> that's clearly built afterward, it looks like a Batman fan built a fake bat cave. <laughs> so this guy is just rich and wears a costume and people placate to him because clearly he's keeping the town's economy afloat with whatever factory he owns <laughs> the whole theme song is great though the only lyric is bible man and in the background he's like sword of the spirit i would ask how drunk willie ames was before he signed on to this project but knowing willie ames the answer is all of it and then they go to the high school and you have the worst actors ever and they do the thing where they're in the background and <laughs> they have to pretend like they're talking and the kid right here not good at that skill he's just like, he's just like ah I'll, I'll flay on my arms this is what people do right <laughs> michael who is i guess i'll call him the main character but he's barely in this mm. the principal i'm guessing she's the principal goes like what's wrong michael and he's just like right now life just stinks and she's like what i'm sure it's not that bad bitch how the fuck do you know what's going on in this kid's life he could be getting abused and you just said eh just sweep it under the rug. So this principal, who works in a junior high school, has yep. decided that this one kid kind of being like, eh, shit kind of sucks right now, because clearly all middle schoolers have great fucking attitudes, <laughs> decides to not even talk to the parents, calls Bible Man uh, on proto-Skype, and is like, hey, Bible Man, um, this kid, he's not happy all the time. And Bible Man, instead of saying, yeah, he's a teenager, says... I better investigate, because clearly 
disgruntled teenager, something's afoot. And if you've ever seen a Bible Man episode with coats in it, him and the computer, uh, codenamed Eunice, it's an acronym like every other sentient computer that's ever existed, they always have like a tit for tat and... Sh- the computer hid his keys or something, or I, he's looking for them and can't find it, and she's giving him bad directions, and then they have a, the, they have a conversation about that, and they're like, ah, why are you fucking with me, Eunice? And she's like, you're black. I'm more concerned with the fact that Bible Man has apparently invented artificial intelligence yeah. that is sentient yep. and sapient, and instead of sharing this with the world, it's like, I bet I can teach a lot of people about the Bible with this. <laughs> Bible Man also invents anti-gravity technology and, like, a little pod for Eunice's sentience to be inside. And that's fucking incredible. And what does he use it for? Does he use it to find people in, in, in rubble and save their lives? Does he use it to deliver food to the homeless or to save people in an avalanche? Investigate the mouth of a volcano? He just spies on a child who's a little depressed. Yep. This is like the scene in Dark Knight where Batman hijacks everyone's phones mm-hmm. and is like, Who's oh, yes! Uh, except this is terrible and doesn't make sense and it's creepy because Bible Man is stalking children now. We go back to the villain's hideout, which is some sort of abandoned hospital. I don't know. It's a shitty establishing shot. And uh, he's looking at the bio- at Bible Man in the cave. So apparently this guy knows who Bible Man is. He well, could he's got ta- CCTV inside Bible Man's fucking cave. He could take a gun and shoot Bible Man. Bible Man has no powers. He's just a guy who had enough money to buy a purple suit and have a black friend. <laughs> Anyways, this villain is the best part of this show. And oh, this yeah. guy plays the villain in like 90% of these... Uh, episodes Will- the of the Williams year. era of Bible Man. And he's great, because I don't know if this guy was on board with the whole Bible Man concept or if he just needed something on his resume. This or... guy is hamming it up like crazy. Oh, he yeah. doesn't give a single fuck. Uh, and then he explains the gun he has, which is the same gun that the Joker had earlier, by the way. Well, they ran out of prop budget. Clearly. Because and... it was because of the gliding scene from earlier. And he says the gun is an anti-joy transmitter, so it just makes people sad. Why doesn't he just use a gun? Guns I... make people equally sad, if not more because they're shot in the face yeah and then you know people are sad around that and and wounded usually we cut back to bible man who's looking at the readings he took off that child because he not only filmed them he took readings off the insides of his body because that's a normal thing to do he's (laughs) drinking some sort of beverage and i can't read the can but if it's not alcohol on the outside the contents of the can because it's willie ames almost certainly are i'm pretty sure it's a bud light he's morning drinking (laughs) That's Willie Ames' job. <laughs> they uh, go back to the villain yet again uh, after Bible Man decides to like leave the cave to go check on this kid. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the villain reiterates his plan, which is just to make people sad. Uh, he breaks into Bible Man's cave, which is the easiest thing to do, apparently. They dug into it with a shovel and a pickaxe. Yeah. They, so didn't, even have, they didn't even need two shovels. They <laughs> both use separate tools. And uh, they break in and they install something into Eunice because the idea is that they're going to use Bible Man's transmitter, which he has for some reason. Well, it's because he's got a the fucking anti-gravity robot. Yep, that explains it. Uh, th- he's going to use that to transmit a sadness thing, which means he can apparently target more than one person at a time, which is important for his plan to make people sad. And Willie Ames and Coates come downstairs and there's a giant fucking hole in the wall where... <laughs> The villain and his friend dug into. They don't notice. And, uh, and there's fog on the ground, like a fog machine is on. And Willie Ames goes, does it feel different down here, Coates? And Coates is like, I don't know, I'm the cool one. Now the plot is thickening. I don't know how this is supposed to make me feel. They had a smoke machine, though, so you know it's like, it's totally legit. It's like a movie. And we get a little bit of techno babble about data that they're getting from the kid. And then the thing starts going off, and there's an alarm, and Coates is like, Oh my god, I can't believe how much depressed this kid is getting. Because depression is a thing you can measure on a computer. There's waves. This is different than the normal waves that make people depressed or something. Fuck therapists. I'm Bible man. I know what's going on. Willie Ames, really mentally stable guy, so he really, uh, he's an authority on mental health issues. And when shit hits the fan in Bible Man, it hits so hard, the frames drop out of the goddamn cameras, so you know it's hardcore. 
Bioland decides to get into his armor because this is super important to go talk to this kid right now, and he can't just talk as a person. He has to be in his right. purple suit. Well, it's how it makes him feel safe when he goes outside. Yeah, the, the armor sequence is literally just Willie Ames standing in a foggy alcove, and that's pretty much it. And then Coates will say, like, Shield of Righteousness, and Willie Ames from the alcove will go, Shield of Righteousness. Bible Man then uh, has a Bible bike. Yep. This shot is terrible. I think Willie Ames just wanted to sit on a motorcycle for a minute so he could feel cool. <laughs> Bible Man gets to the school and confronts the bad guys who are fucking with the one kid. For some reason, They're is in... he the, the one kid to rule them all? I don't know what's going on, but uh, he quotes scripture because that's one of his only powers. And then he has a lightsaber because they couldn't come up with any original ideas. And they have a okay lightsaber fight it actually looks like they both hate each other at this point it really does i think willie ames and this dude had some beef behind the scenes on the set (laughs) and so they're they're taking pretty good pretty healthy swings at each other and then uh, the sidekick has the gun and he shoots him with a misery gun even though he could have shot him right in the fucking liver with a regular gun would have been fine willie ames would have been dead and his liver wouldn't have been any worse off than it already was (laughs) because of the alcohol you see uh and bible man quotes a scripture and gets right back up like he's fine so the gun clearly pointless uh, and the bad guy gets away so this conflict no bearing on anything we didn't learn anything it wasn't very well scripted this whole thing it's like a it's like a silent fart that goes away (laughs) real quick it's not relevant it's terrible but it's not enough to dwell on so let's just keep pushing forward (laughs) but then the sidekick asks what if god does have the ability to turn sorrow into joy Which obviously means we need a musical number. It's great. It's the best. What good is it, I ask you please? Is everyone losing their mind? How can anyone wake up so happy? Will I just waste my time? Just putting a smile on your face. But we found out something very interesting. We were watching this a little bit and we got tired of the chorus and the shit and we were like, ah, let's just skip through it. So Hugo goes to fast forward it a little bit and goes to 1.5 times speed. It turned into a reasonable ska song. So there you go. Check this out. I lose my appetite. Not the worst. Not the worst thing. A little... It's almost... It's, at the, it's still ska. You know the 90s remake of the song Take On Me? Yeah. It's like that. Yeah. I'd put it on that level. All right. Anyway. Bible Man techno babbles and explains that the gun makes you sad. That's all you needed to know, and we already knew that, but Bible Man needs to feel important, so... He tells us that it makes you feel sad. It can also affect several hundred people. Did you hear me? Several hundred people. That's not even a that's not even a medium case of bad food poisoning at a restaurant. No. Like if that many people got sick because of lettuce, there wouldn't even be a recall. <laughs> and it's not even like this is giving them diarrhea, it just makes them marginally sad. So Bible Man decides to go to the science fair, which they've talked about because they think, where's there gonna be hundreds of people? A high school science fair? There's going to be hundreds of people? Not the football game. Uh, so they go, and Bible Man just shows up. No one pays attention. Everyone's just placating to Willie Ames' shit. And not to mention, Coates is there, and he doesn't have a disguise. So shouldn't everyone know who Bible Man is based on his friend Coates? Are, is he even really a secret? Because when they see him, they're... It's not really like, oh, cool, Bible Man's here. It's more like, oh, Bible Man's here. Bible Man's here. Should we talk to him? No, I mean, I'd rather avoid it. Bible Man's kind of the, he's the friend that, that doesn't get invited but shows up anyways. Bible Man's main power, we talked about the Bible verses and the lightsaber. His main power, though, is talking 
to children and making them uncomfortable with his terrible cosplay. Talks to Michael and he's like, what's wrong, Michael? And Michael's like, has the worst first world problem I've ever heard. Mm. It doesn't even sound like depression. It just sounds like he's an asshole. He says, everyone's science fair project is better than mine. Well, maybe you're bad at science, maybe Michael. Like, maybe go do bad. something else. I'm sure you're good at something else. Go write fucking angry poetry and cut. You're probably good at that. We get a close up of uh, <laughs> Bible Man's cape. <laughs> and I turn to Jake and I go, what the fuck is Bible Man's cape made of? It looks like an old awning. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that was the deal. Bible Man found an old awning that was purple and built the entire suit around. Yeah. That. It's like when you find a really nice faucet in a kitchen, and you're just like, oh, okay, I'm going to build the kitchen around this one faucet fixture. Well, how else are you going to decide? Bible is a pretty loose theme, so you got to awning. Purple and yellow, I'm awning. Basi- I'm awning man, also Bible. <laughs> Eunice calls Bible man to say the villain is in the cave again. I don't know why. He already installed the thing from before. Did Willie Ames and Coates not notice the giant hole? No. Is that how he got back in? That must be. Uh, so they get another shitty fight, but it looks just as aggressive as before. Clearly these two hate each other. They're, yeah. they're, they either really hate each other or they are hate fucking behind the set, which they might be. I get it. Bible man makes me horny too, but that's not the point. I'm not going to fuck on a working set because it's unprofessional. Willie Ames, stop it. Anyway. <laughs> so he says one of the, another cringy line mode. You can't steal a Christian's joy or whatever. Cause and in my head, I thought there's so many ways I could steal a Christian's joy or anyone's joy for that matter. I could kill their mom. I could blow up their puppy. I could burn their childhood home down. I could steal their lunch. Those are those are four ways you can make anyone upset. I also like the implication that there are no depressed Christians ever. Apparently, That's according to Bible Man. That's a huge reason that people end up being Christian. Yeah, they're, not, just, not, they're, they're upset, and they're like, ah, I need this to fucking cope. Anyways. So the fight goes on for a while, and then the computer straight up blows up the bad guy, because it's okay to murder bad guys uh, in Bible Man, which usually happens. They murder this guy a lot. It's so weird. I know. Like, even fucking... Bible Man is closer to the Punisher than he is Batman. <laughs> And they go back to the science fair, and they're like, ah, everything's good now, right, Coates? And he's like, ah, everyone's happy. And then Bible Man gives him kind of this, like, condescending torso touch, like, good job, boy. <laughs> I think that's what Willie Ames was thinking. <laughs> Willie Ames, not not a good guy. Nope. Not a good guy. Bible Man talks to Michael, who had a total of about 47 seconds of screen time. Which was probably too much, let's be honest. That kid could not fucking act. So who the fuck cares what happens to Michael? He's fine. Other than he had to deal with Bible Man, but that's just an inconvenience. And apparently some time passes, and then the principal FaceTimes Bible Man, sort of. She says... Michael's family life is a lot better, and it's like, wait, what? He was having family problems? and You like, never mentioned that. So clearly he does have issues that need to be dealt with, but they're like, nah, him and his mom are going to church now, so it's fine. Like, whoa, 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 no, Bible man. Like, going to church doesn't stop someone from being a dick. Like, <laughs> his mom might be an alcoholic, which you can relate to, Willie Ames, oh. uh, and might be beating him, but they're going to church, so it's fine. Terribly misplaced confidence in the whole church thing. Oh, for sure. An alarm goes off, and, and, and there's a threat afoot and that they both have to go for, uh, apparently. Bible man just off to warn the children about the dangers of free thought. These kids these days worrying about family issues. They should stop and just read the Bible. That's what Willie Ames did. Worked out for him. <laughs> Jesus barely even had a family. He doesn't worry about that shit. And then at the end, there's a PSA where Bible man says, Hey, kids, you should be saved. Go ahead and talk to a family member or a priest or a pastor or whatever. Which is okay, I mean, for what it is, it's stupid, but it is Bible Man. But I remember when I was a kid, because I used to watch these, uh, there was at least one where Bible Man led the audience in prayer to be saved. So that means there are some people out there around my age who are probably their becoming a Christian story involves Willie Ames and purple (laughs) styrofoam. (laughs) It's really stupid uh, and kind of fucked up to be like, I'm Bible Man, kid, let's decide your entire religious (laughs) uh, philosophical identity right now. Anyway, that's Bible Man. It's pretty fucking terrible. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't say never watch it, though. I mean... It, it's it, better than Salty. That's true. It's it's different. Salty's good for what the fuck. Bible Man's good for good old-fashioned, cringy, Christian pandering to the youths. Oh, for sure. So, and also you get your Willie Ames fix, which you didn't know you needed. Yeah, Willie Ames, I don't know what he's up to these days, but it, I, I he's got to be in a better place than this. I heard he's a cruise director, which... 
I'd take being a cruise director over being Bible man. Celebritynetworth.com says his net worth is a hundred thousand dollars. My my dad is worth more than that. Net worth. Yeah, talking about like houses and cars. That's and, weird. Yeah. Poor Willie Ames. But also, yeah, Willie Ames. <laughs> so thanks everyone. Uh suggest more stuff in the comments. Next time it'll probably be a movie again. We've done a couple yeah. show things, so we'll do a movie. Uh, maybe see me dance. I don't know. That one looks fucked up. Yeah. I don't but know. if you have a different suggestion, put it in the comments. But not Noah, because we're probably gonna get we'd, we'd, we'd get, get flagged. We'd immediately. get flagged immediately for using footage of that. So pretty much anything other than Noah in the comments. <laughs> you can always donate to our Patreon. Two thousand dollars gets us to the uh, Harold Penisman thing, and uh, we are sending all the last Bibles out. So if you haven't gotten your Bible yet, it's coming in the next. Well, I don't know how long it'll take to ship, but we're we are going to get them out in the next couple of weeks, the last little bit, and then we will be starting the chick tracks and t-shirts getting those put out. We just about have enough people signed up for the exclusive Patreon t-shirts yeah. to get them out to people. We uh, need a few more before we can order them. Yeah. Uh but uh we'll do that as soon as we can, and obviously you can get your signed chick tracks, uh just a random one that we have. We'll yeah. sign it and probably write in it a little bit. Uh, you can always follow us on Twitter at Bible Reloaded. You can follow Hugo at Hugo Reloaded. If you're on Reddit, you can always check us out at Are the Bible Reloaded. You can yeah. always talk about us there, post our videos, whatevs. Yeah, it'll be uh, really cool. You should subscribe. Yeah. Other and and then that's really the end of our spiel. So other than that, until next time, I'm Hugo. And I'm Jay. And this has been the Bible Reloaded. It never. Eight is enough was a good show, wasn't it? Eight is enough was a good show, wasn't it? We should have stayed on the air longer, shouldn't we?